Hey, welcome to What Makes This Movie Great, episode one, and I'm going to talk about Decalogue 1. Decalogue 1 is the first film in the 10 film anthology series titled The Decalogue. Now, The Decalogue is loosely based on the Ten Commandments, and Decalogue 1 is then loosely based on the first commandment, which is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, why would anybody want to watch this movie? It's Polish, it's 30 years old, it's based on the Bible. For some people, that might be interesting, and a lot of people I know, well, maybe not so much. But if you've ever been interested in faith versus science issues, run to go see this movie. If you're interested in theology at all, any kind of theology, science, and the connections between theology and science, that's what you need to do is watch this movie, uh, because it's all about that. Um, the commandment, thou shalt not have no other gods before me, is a commandment about idol worship. In the Christian tradition, and I'll speak specifically about that, even though this movie might sync up with the Jewish tradition, in the Christian tradition, having no other gods before me means that God is the supreme and only God in one's faith life. And that we as Christians, or we as actually all people everywhere in the history of the world, are tempted to worship idols. Idols can be anything, an animal, a plant, a word, a person, it can be a text, it can be even an idea. Uh, one can worship money, one can worship the love of money, one can worship one's son. So this is an idea that extends into Decalogue 1. So this movie is about a father, it's set in communist Poland, or right at the end of the of communist era in Poland. The father loves his son, they live together in an apartment building, and they enjoy doing things together, specifically science-oriented or logic-oriented things. In this movie, they, they do calculations on a computer, they do math lessons, they play chess together. Actually, they're a team, and they play a master or a grandmaster in chess. And this professor has a, a deep love for his son, so maybe that's his temptation in this movie, is to love his son too much. There's another temptation, though, for this professor. He's a lapsed Catholic. He seems to be an agnostic, maybe an atheist, and so he doesn't believe in anything but material reality, or so it seems. He says the soul doesn't exist, that people talk about the souls and afterlife and the souls going into afterlife just because they need some comfort. He actually tells his 10 to 12 year old son this very thing. The son is very disturbed at one point early in the movie. He finds a dead dog. And he says, well, why am I doing anything? Why does anything matter if we're all going to die? And the father tries to console his son, but he has a hard time doing it, especially given that what he's telling the son essentially is, you have to believe in something, but it really is going to end one day, and maybe nothing actually matters except the memories of what you did. That's what the father says lives on forever, forever is memories. So the father and the son have this tight bond, and the movie is going to challenge that tight bond. I mean, one way it challenges it is that the father, being a lapsed Catholic or an atheist or agnostic, is pitted against his sister, not in a terribly tense way, but his sister is a Catholic. She's a believer in Christ and the church, and she wants the son to be given religion lessons. So the father says okay uh, to, that, to that, but you have this son pull between, or this kid pull between the father and his aunt. Uh, in this movie, you'll see a computer screen, and that might be the other thing that the father is tempted to believe in, or a symbol of it. The father seems to believe, trust even, deeply in science, in technology, in our knowledge, human beings' knowledge and understanding, our ability to use our brains to rationalize, rat reason out things, and then to determine what's going to happen in the future, to make predictions, uh, to, to change the future. Uh, in one scene, he actually tries to calculate whether the ice on the lake outside the apartment building is frozen or not. And he's worried that his son going ice skating on this lake might fall into the lake because th the lake is not frozen. So he and his son do a calculation on the computer, they determine that the lake is frozen. The father doesn't totally trust that. He actually goes out and pokes the lake with a stick to see if the ice is frozen before he lets his son go skate on the lake. So nevertheless, there's a scene where the father is as, acts as a professor and he says he believes that robots or technology one day will be able to allow us to perfectly translate one language into another. 
he says that poetry is untranslatable from English to Polish, let's say, or Polish to English. But he hopes that technology one day, and he believes it will, will create a perfect translation. And thus, maybe the, the logical extension of this is there's no need for any languages. Now, the father has, has these beliefs in science and technology and reason and faith. It shows up in the symbol of a computer, and several times a computer appears in the movie. It's got a green, eerie glow to it. In fact, Kieslowski, the director, suffuses a lot of the shots with this green all over the place. And in one sense, green is a color of hope. In another sense, green is a color of mystery. And it's also disturbing. It's an artificial green. So maybe that means it's an artificial hope. At one point, the computer turns on and the father doesn't understand why. It just seems to come on. And on the screen, all it says is in text that you see, I am ready, with a flashing cursor right beside the word ready. Father said, ponder this. What's going on here? How could it turn on all by itself? Does it have a mind of its own? Did we do this? So there's a bit of mystery to this thing that the father might be idolizing. And that's in tension with the certainty that he thinks science, technology, and re human reason can bring. Certainty versus mystery. So you have these tensions in the movie. Now, I think in a way, the movie starts out with faith versus science. Clearly, it, when it depicts the ant as being a believer or religious person versus the father who's not, or who is who doesn't seem to be religious, he seems to be an atheist. Oh, and by the way, this movie is all about atheism and Catholicism in Poland, which was under a communist regime and yet deeply traditionally Catholic. So Poland in circa 1989 has atheism and, and Catholicism sort of vying with one another, competing perhaps, uh, who is going to be our God, the God of Poland, that is. So I don't think this movie is about faith versus science, even though that's the way it starts out, with the, with the aunt, the sister being a religious person, and the father being an atheist. It eventually moves to the point of a part of the ten, of the first commandment, and this is the Catholic version of the Ten Commandments, about the forbidding of graven images, of creating images of God. And if you have an image of God, you are degrading God. You might even substitute the image of, for God and make the image God itself. Okay, so an icon, for example, can be worshipped. It ought not to be worshipped. It ought to be a sign that points to God in the Catholic, I think, in Eastern Orthodox tradition as well. This father looks at the computer screen, and maybe he makes an idol out of it, but it's all. it also picks up some other symbolism later in the movie, including as a sign, this message, I am ready, telling the father something he needs to do. I'm going to let you watch the movie and figure that for yourself. There's a magnificent last five minutes to this movie just remarkable in a lot of ways this message i am ready is really interesting on the computer it corresponds to a couple things and since this movie is a decalogue movie about the first five books of the bible and the ten commandments fall in the first five books of the bible the pentateuch um, this movie really talks a lot about early bible stories particularly genesis and exodus i am ready corresponds to Moses in the burning bush. When Moses sees God in a burning bush, all of a sudden the bush is on fire and it's glowing and God even tells Moses his name. What is his name? I am that I am, which is pretty close to the message on the computer, I am ready. Other things coming up in this movie, father-son relationships. There's lots of those in not, not just the whole Bible, but even just the book of Genesis, especially the one about Abraham and Isaac. So I highly recommend you watch this movie with Abraham and Isaac in mind, as well as any other father-son pair, whether that's um, Isaac and Jacob or Jacob and Joseph or something like that. But Abraham and Isaac are at the foreground of this movie. Later in the movie, you'll see this movie turn to the New Testament, to Mary, and images of Mary. So that will be very interesting for you to look at. I highly recommend Decalogue number one, as I do just about all of the Decalogue movies, but the first one sets the tone for the whole Decalogue series, which is about particular people, small people, nothing special about them, they're not famous, they're not celebrities, ordinary people, let's say, but every single ordinary person has to deal with higher laws, with questions of 
who God is, does God exist, why am I here, what laws should I, I obey, why should I obey those laws, and so each of these 10 Decalogue movies, you know, shows us all that each one of us, no matter who we are, has to deal with these humongous greater metaphysical realities and these huge, enormous questions, uh, especially related in this case to the father, an ordinary guy who then is dealing with this question of idol worship or what does it mean to worship a god, any god? What does it mean to believe in something, to have faith in something? Go watch Decalogue 1. Great movie. Highly recommended. Thanks for watching. Oh, and please subscribe to my channel. I really hope you do. Subscribe, subscribe, and like this video if you want to. Thank you very much.